Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is an episode of my series called Make It a Chord Melody, where I'm talking about the art and craft of playing and creating chord melodies on the guitar, which is where we are harmonizing melodies, we're playing melodies and supporting the melody with chord shapes at the same time. There's a link to the whole series in the description if you wanna check out all the videos in this series. So far, we have talked about chord melodies in a jazz context because that is the genre where this term chord melody is used most often. So we've arranged some jazz tunes, we've talked about improvised chord melodies over jazz chord changes, but chord melodies don't have to just be played in the context of jazz. We can create chord melodies from any song, any pop song, any random nursery rhyme, whatever. As long as we have the melody and the harmony, we know what the chords are, we know what the melody is, we can follow some of these guidelines and rules that I've talked about so far in this series and that I'll talk about in this lesson to create a chord melody arrangement. So in this video, I'm going to take the song Long Black Veil, a beautiful haunting song that was originally a country song, kind of be has become kind of a standard song in some ways now. Johnny Cash uh, did a very popular version of it and it's just a beautiful song and very simple with only three chords, the one, four, five chords and a very simple melody that uses the pentatonic scale. So this is very different than jazz where the harmony is really thick and changing keys and the melody can get chromatic and we're having to think um, of extended chords and whatnot. Well, what about if a song is Super, super simple and basic one, four, five chords, country song, folk song, this kind of thing. Let's do it. Let's make Long Black Veil into a chord melody on the guitar. So let's review the chords and the melody and make sure we have those. I'll sing the lyrics too, just so we get the song in our head a little bit. We're just gonna do the first section of the song to talk about the principles and um, the approach for arranging a chord melody when we're just working with triads and simple melodies. So the song goes 10 years ago on a cold dark night someone was killed neath the town hall lights few were at the scene but they all agreed the slayer who ran looked a lot like me nobody knows nobody sees nobody knows but me. So that's the section we're going to work with. I kind of just jumped to another section after that first verse just to have two different um, portions of the song. We're just working with D chord, G chord, A chord, one, four, five in the key of D um, and a very simple pentatonic melody. Let's break down the melody on the top uh, three strings and then look at the scale that it's coming from and then start to make voicings around every instance of the melody. So let's map out the melody on the top two or three strings. One, 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 two, three, 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 two, one, two, two, three, two, five, five, six, one, one. If you don't understand numbers of scales like that, check out my chord theory series that breaks down from beginning to advanced um, how to think through scales with the scale degree numbers, which is immensely helpful for seeing and hearing structures and then figuring out what chords go uh, to melodies. So one, two, three, um, five, six, one. This is a complete pentatonic scale. One, two, three, two, one, six, five, one. Um, so that's that section. I did this other section too. Five, 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 three, three, two, one. One, one, five, one, one, three, two, one. That's that other section. So I'm choosing to be mostly on the second string here, and then I have to go down here to the third string for this five and six of the pentatonic scale. Of course, I could go da, 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 and move over here for this note. So when you're working out your melodies on the top, three strings or so for making a chord melody arrangement, that's part of the process is to say, well, I could play it here, or I could play it here. And the deciding factor when it comes to chord melody arranging is just what chord shape do you wanna play? So if a D is supporting that note, could be that shape or could be that shape, which are the same exact pitches, same voicing. So it, it has to do with kind of physically what is easier and what feels better to execute in the end. So um, once we map out the melody, then let's just kind of play with the scale, make sure we really see, see and feel the scale that it's coming from and or at least the, you know, all of the collection of notes that it, the melody um, 
includes kind of play with it as a scale in this case it's a complete pentatonic scale so it's kind of easy and lyrical to kind of review it just make sure you see it kind of as a collection on the fretboard and you can jump around to any of them pretty quickly. Now I'll just give you the chord shapes note by note that support this melody. So this first part, da, 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 we just want to think, well, that's the melody and the chord that is under those the whole time is the D chord. Okay, so what are voicings of D that can support these? And I'm going to show you how I map out every single note of the melody with a chord shape and then I'll take away some of those chord shapes later to make it easier to play. Um, and I've talked about that in other videos in this series. So this right here is the root of the D scale, the tonic note of the D scale. And I'm gonna support it with a three note chord that is the first inversion of D. This is the three, this is the five, and this is the root of D. Okay, and then that next melody note, I'm going to play the two of the scale with these two notes still down here. So this is the root up here, and I'm okay with replacing the root with the next melody note as the two. Sounds kind of nice. That's a quick passing note anyway, and then I'm gonna go up to this shape for the next one. So part of what we wanna have, we can spend our time you know, poking around and, and trying to find the voicings. And really, if that's hard, take all the time you need. That challenging kind of mapping out and, and puzzle solving is really amazing practice. Don't expect to just know where everything lands. But if we do wanna drill our triad chord inversion shapes to make it much easier to quickly see what chord shape could fit over a melody note, then we're just giving ourselves a vocabulary to work with that makes our job a lot easier. So let's go over those real quick. This is D major, uh, first inversion. And because we're talking about chord melodies, instead of saying the inversion, sometimes I will, but I'll say what melody's on top. So this is what uh, scale degrees on top or chord tone. So this is D with the root on top. This is D with the third on top, and this is D with the five on top. So those three shapes, I want you to be able to see, it will benefit you a ton in many ways, many, many genres all over the place for the rest of your guitar playing journey to be able to see these triad shapes. This is D major fifth on top, D major third on top, D major root on top because forever on with any triad on these three strings those are going to be the shapes you use so let's go to the a chord which is next in the song and go through the same process well that same shape just moves to where it needs to be to be a so this is a with the third on top this is a with the fifth on top this is a with the root on top and you can go up that's third on top again then do the same thing on g okay so here's g same shapes Here's G with the fifth on top, same shape as before, where the fifth is on top. So forever, anywhere, this is always a triad with fifth on top wherever you put it, okay? And then we'll go to G with the root on top and G with the third on top. So before even arranging anything, if you want to be doing you know, more popular songs and, and songs with triad harmonies, make sure you see those kinds of shapes really well and see them on different string sets. I have a video that maps out these triads really clearly. That's a very cool um, analysis of an intro to a John Mayer song. And I have diagrams in that video that show all of these triad shapes and ways to practice them. So check that out if you want to. There's a link in the description. So back to the melody here, we're going one, 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 two, three. Well, the melody's three, and this is D with the third on top. Three, three, three. Okay, moving back to this, which is very tricky to get to, especially if you're gonna play it quickly. So we'll probably play this note without a chord supported later if we wanna arrange it into something more musical and playable, but I'm still supporting everything with a chord at first. And the reason I don't do this is that according to kind of my formula and rules and guidelines that I like to follow when doing this to minimize the amount of decision-making and just kind of have it be a plug and play kind of thing, um, I don't want to let go of the third. This does sound quite nice. I love this sound. This would be a D sus2 chord for a moment, but I don't want any of the chord shapes to not have the third in them. Uh, if they don't have the third in them, then they lose the quality of it being a major chord, which again can sound nice, but just as a rule, I want to keep all of those in there and then decide later how I might want to change things according to sound. So we're kind of creating a, a again, kind of a, a process and formula and then we can adapt it artistically all we want later so 
okay? And then we go to the A chord with this note on top. So, okay, there's that shape that we worked on with the five on top. Okay, now we gotta go down to here. So, we're still on the A chord here. So we have to find a shape. And all of these shapes, when I do triad chord melodies, I'm using three notes. When I do seventh chord chord melodies, I'm using four notes. So three notes total, um, and obviously sometimes those are the complete chords and sometimes not because the melody's moving around. So. And then it goes to the G chord. So another just triad shape, G chord, D chord. Ah, oh, that sounds so good. Just the movement of the harmony. Right, here's the melody. Perfectly fine to play that on its own. But that doesn't account for the way that those harmonic notes move. And that is a great example of just the benefit, even just for our ears, of working out chord melodies so we can hear those two things at once. Let's map out this other section. <laughs> Okay, D, da, 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 da. still D, da, da, da. all D, and now it goes to four chord G. Da, da, da. Again, that note on top, same note. Da, da, da. So it's nice to hear the harmony underneath. So da, da, da. D, G, A. that again. Don't worry about how clunky that is, we'll change that later. Okay, let's put the two parts together with this clunky chord version and then we will make it more musical after that. section. Okay, very clunky. I'm strumming every chord, the full chord with the melody on top um, every time. Now, let's make this more musical by making some choices where maybe we will play the melody and then fill in the chord. We have all the shapes and that's what's so cool about mapping it out at first. Right, get to that melody and then fill in the chord. I could maybe play this open E instead of this here to get to get a transition from. Um, right, just strumming the chords sometimes. Okay, I'll do that again. Right, so it's, it becomes more musical, almost becoming this, um, getting closer to even a solo guitar arrangement where we're f kind of filling it out into multiple parts more. Okay, let's do this part up here. Okay, use that open E again to get down there. Right, so I played the root of the, or at least a, just any note of the chord first, since the melody wasn't coming in until after beat one of that chord change. So, and I'm just kind of doing those things intuitively, I'm not overthinking it, but I'm just trying to say, well, the melody doesn't happen yet, but the chord changes, so I'll play it a note or two from the chord, then add the melody, or if the melody's right on the chord change, play the melody first, then add the chord. There's no right or wrong way to do it at all. This is, this is the funnest part of it, where you get to take this, you know, semi-formulaic approach and then make we make it our own. It's the best of both worlds. It's not gonna end up being robotic. It can be very personalized, individualized, and unique, but also there's a, a path to follow to get there. So we have some constraints and we have some freedom. From there, of course, you can add other notes. You can, you know, we have this framework, this, this little kind of nugget of a starting point 
and you can keep it there and play around with that or you can say maybe add the root here so you know change the chords around we know that we have this but you can add the root there or you can maybe uh, add embellishments start to move notes around within the chord even uh, just whatever sounds good or whatever you conceive of and you can fill out so notice I rely back on those kind of basic chords to just because I love that spot but you might want to fill in the, the notes more so So I, I rather like the more minimal, kind of fewer notes. I'm just showing how we could fill, if we know bigger chord shapes and you want a bigger sound for a minute, you could do that or try to add roots um, below or whatever you like. Let's do a run through of the arrangement just to hear the whole thing. If you want some chord melody arrangements with tab and notation as a PDF, you can get my free solo guitar arrangement pack. There's a link in the description to grab that, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon. So far in this series, I've talked about jazz chord melody arranging until this video. If you liked the pop song, simpler song, kind of triad arranging uh, approach that we did in this video and the result of it, check out my chord melody video that I did a while ago that is kind of a more single video basic overview of chord melody arranging and in that video I arranged Let It Be by the Beatles and also Happy Birthday with the same approach uh, that I did here and they both sound really cool. Thanks so much for watching and happy practicing.